this guy fell off and um, he had multiple fractures, he had a head injury because of which he was unconscious for a while, people were not sure what is to be done. Ultimately, he came to us with this kind of um, injury on his left tibia, the right side was reasonably okay and that is what it looked like on the lateral. He had a definite rotational component to his deformity, he was um, shorter. So, there was this intraarticular fracture which was reasonably um, well aligned, it was not terrible and um, I think getting alignment over here is, is more important. He had this metaphyseal varus and a mid shaft valgus, there was distal valgus in this fracture over here and his ankle was fused. On the lateral view, he had this proximal recurvatum, he had procurvatum in the mid shaft and as a consequence, we say 2 A's is equal to 1 T, he had this translation, 2 angulations is equal to 1 translation. So, effectively the uh, distal fragment was translated um, in the front. Now, if you do the planning which uh, is, we, we talked about the proximal axis, what we want to do ultimately is get this ankle in line with the femoral axis. So, you draw the femoral axis from the center of the head, center of the knee and extend it downwards. This becomes your proximal <laughs> axis and then through the center of the ankle up the tibia is your distal axis. So, this gives you what we call a resolution cora, you do not have to kind of look at each and every deviation of that. If you do the osteotomy here and straighten it, overall the axis of this leg is going to be uh, well aligned. But what is happening on, so this is where your cora or your hinge axis is going to be. So, what about the lateral? That is the proximal axis, this is the distal axis and that intersects over here. So, in this case, we drew a third line to get a cora point at the same level on the lateral as it was on the AP. And because it, it was not really very much visible and displacements in the sagittal plane do not have as much of an effect as um, displacements or angulations in the coronal. So, we decided to do the osteotomy here. So, that that is where on the lateral and that is where it is on the AP. So, he had all of these um, deformities and this is what <laughs> it looks like. So, this does not take away from the principles of Elizara, whether you use a Taylor spatial frame, whether you use a hexapod, whether you use anything, the principles of stable internal fix, uh, stable external fixation still remain. This is just a toy that you can use to manipulate um, the rings. And so, we put on these um, six struts this is the internal rotation, that is the level of the osteotomy and what these things require because it is such a complex movement, any six axis system requires software to tell you, you know how it has to be distracted. So, and this software has got one sort of a good, uh, not, not version, it has got a good uh, feature that it, it shows you, you see the yellow outline and the red outline, the yellow outline is uh, outline which you make of the distal fragment and the red outline is what the software then projects that at the end of this correction what it is going to look like. So, you get a visual cue as to how things are going to um, improve. So, you can see that the axis is more or less corrected on this and even on the lateral though it is anteriorly translated, the axis is corrected. So, this is what we planned for, we planned to correct all his valgus recurvatum, some of his uh, rotation and some of the shortening, that is he had about 60 mm of shortening. There were, there are hiccups for which there are solutions, then we did a second sort of stage, you do not necessarily have to do everything together, you get fresh x-rays done and whatever it needs to be fine tuned, uh, lengthening, rotation etcetera, we do that. So, that is his second plan which was for 35 days and by the end of that we had all his rotation um, corrected. He was still short by uh, 3 centimeters, 
mechanical axis deviation was going through the lateral condyle, so that needed to be straightened up a little. So, all of that minor sort of corrections were done. So, that is the progress of his um, frontal correction rotation and that is the um, final sort of um, alignment that was achieved. And the advantage of a 6 axis over a regular Elis rav especially when there is a large amount of rotation is that um, when you do an Elis rav distraction or even a angular correction and you get a nice tube and then you rotate that there is to a, to a certain extent there is a ringing out of that tube and you can have trouble with uh, you can have trouble with uh, regenerate regenerate sort of ossifying number one. Number two is because in the tibia the, the tibia is never centered in the ring. So, whenever you do a rotation you also get a certain amount of translation, but when you use a 6 axis system you can define the axis of rotation as being within the tibia. So, whatever rotation happens happens there and you do not get the uh, tibia translated you get the rings which relatively translate to each other which you will see. And uh, finally, is that with a 6 axis it goes from point to point uh, point A to point B in sort of one straight line. So, it is still even while you are rotating it is distracting. So, that gives you a much better regenerate which this is what he had. So, now you see his rings are not all that uh, parallel to each other you see the lower rings are kind of displaced to one side and we take then we take that take those off and using the various you know the modularity of the Elisera you connect the proximal set of rings to the distal set of rings things um, heal up pretty well and this was at the time of um, removal of the fixator this is 2 months post removal. So, now if you if you ignore all this wavy stuff proximal to distal well aligned proximal to distal well aligned though um, anteriorly translated, but that is a conscious decision that we uh, took. You know, so six axis basically can do a, everything that an Elisera um, does, but it comes into its own, so to speak, when when there is rotation um, involved. Number one, number two, when especially in the pediatric situation, when your osteotomies often cannot be at the level of the cora, the cora tends to be at the epiphysis, and your osteotomy has to be usually. Um, lower down. In that case there has to be certain amount of translation. If you are very comfortable with the use of hinges of course, you can put your hinges for an angular deformity and uh, correct that, but uh, if you use a 6 axis that becomes a little uh, simpler, but again it is not the cure for all your you know maladies. It is only a tool you still have to know all the planning principles to decide where is the cora to decide where am I going to do the osteotomy. This thing will just allow you to use um, an Elisera of fixator with a little more ease. Thank you. I would request Dr. Sriram to hand over a small memento to Dr. Mangal Parihar.